think that's a survivable job. Oh shit! <laughs> Fuck you, fall damage! Fandom. Fandom never changes. Hello again, I am Blunty. Three weeks remain till the release of the Fallout TV series on Prime Video, and the marketing train keeps choo-chooing right along. I shall now pause to consider how stupid that turn of phrase actually sounded. I mean, we're going to be talking about power armor here in a second, and there is a perk in the games called Pain Train, and one of the most powerful weapons in Fallout 76 is the Railway Rifle, but still, choo-chooing? <laughs> Come on, Blunty. It's dumb. Moving on. Hey, what is your favorite Fallout power armor, by the way? I'll tell you mine at the end of the video, I guess, but which one would you want to see for the TV show? I think my second runner-up would be the Excavator armor, but mainly because it looks like Bumblebee from Transformers. I love it. On the subject of the TV show, we got our first full trailer about a dozen days ago, and it was fairly well received. I quite liked it. Today, we got what is titled a scene, but it's it's not really a scene at all. It's it's a, it's part of a scene, a small snippet of a scene, a scene let, if you will, right in the middle of an actual scene. It seems, but whatever, marketing is marketing. But it's pretty cool. It shows off a few fallouty feeling things. I'm not in love with the color grading of the show. It seems a bit too bright and clean somehow for Fallout. It's just not dirty enough. I don't know. But the set design, the props, the costumes, they all seem spot on. I'm loving that. And there's no doubt that, post-production cinematographer choices aside, it absolutely looks like Fallout, doesn't it? But we, and when I say we, I mean actual Fallout fans, are all worried if it will feel like Fallout. Or are they, as I chatted about in another recent video, throwing up a few red flags already that should make the actual Fallout fans worry that many of the more subtle things, things past just the looks, that we love about the series will be thrown away pooped on, or arbitrarily changed for no clear reason other than the TV show people wanted to make a change, because they're just that arrogant about it. Halo fans know what I'm talking about, don't you? Hmm? Sorry to remind you that that TV show exists, but uh, I'm making a point here. Now, past all that is the other big discussion point uh, that people are uh, having a hard time with, really. It's the power armor. Firstly, the distorted voice. I personally hate it. I don't know about you, but I can't even hear what his name was. I played it back a few times and I can't tell. Is it Knight Tatus? Maintainus? Might make us? Knight Titus of the Brotherhood of Steel. Knight Titus of the Brotherhood of Steel. Knight Titus of the Brotherhood of Steel. I honestly have no idea. The YouTube video doesn't even have captions, so I can't check. In Fallout 4, where we have a voice protagonist player character, which a lot of people didn't like, but whatever, uh, the voice does get tinny and echoey when you are in your power armor in dialogue scenes, but it's still very clear and easy to pass and listen to. This, though, pitch shifted so low and with a lot of reverb and crap, I always have a lot of trouble listening to dialogue like that. It might be an autism thing and how my brain processes auditory crap and voices in particular, but I hate it. It makes it very difficult to listen to and pass and, 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 and smashes my any chance I have to you know remain immersed in the show because I'm trying so hard to hear it and I have to rewind it and replay it. And, ugh. Please don't do that, editors. Please do not do that crap. But the biggest point of contention is the entrance the power armor makes. There's three main camps of people reacting badly to this. First are the people who clearly have never even watched the game being played, and never mind played it themselves, they just want to whine about the show for whatever reason they can find, because they seem surprised by the Power Armor's very existence, calling it an Iron Man suit. What? Oh, they've just got Iron Man suits? What? The, the Power Armor has been in the game since day one. I mean, for crying out loud, the cover art of the very first Fallout game in 1997, older, I would guess, than a lot of people commenting on the damn video, it had a model T-51 Power Armor helmet as its key image. Secondly, you've got the ones who seemed shocked that it has thrusters on it. And while it's true that until Fallout 4, that is, until 2015, Power Armor didn't have that kind of stuff. But that was eight years ago now. You've had time to, you know, see the concept. 
you've had nearly a decade to notice that sometimes power armor has jets. Fallout 4 introduced the concept of jetpacks being available for use in power armor. It wasn't really free flight, you couldn't just zoom around the map, Iron Man style if you will. It was more of a jet assisted jump, it was for short hops basically and guided landings. And in Fallout 76, which chronologically predates all other Fallout games, there's like a dozen different jetpacks available for many models of power armor, even some cosmetic choices for those jetpacks. But the third type complaining about the suit's jets are people who do understand those first two things, but are still upset that the jets seem to be coming from the wrong place. They're coming from the, the gauntlet braces, not a jetpack. And yeah, I get that. It was jarring for me too. I was like, hey, wait a second. That's not right. It seems an arbitrary choice to make for the TV show producers. I mean, jetpacks are inherently way, way cooler than little wrist squirt jet things. Why bother with a change like that? How does it make it better? Jetpacks look cooler, sound cooler, are cooler, are more stylistically interesting, would present on camera better. I don't understand it. But while I have made videos about why canonical changes can be extremely unsettling for certain people, including myself sometimes. This one is easy enough to cope with, in my mind at least. There's many models of power armor in the various games in canon. They've been made at different times in different places for different use cases. There's experimental units. There's units for different kinds of protection, either physical or radiation or a mix of both to various extents. There's, there are models that exist that are kind of worse than the models that came before them, but are easier to repair, something that makes sense in a militaristic setting. There's even ones specifically adapted for mining use instead of warfare. That would be the excavator suit that I mentioned at the start of the video. So I have no trouble believing that this, what otherwise seems to be a pretty screen accurate recreated suit of T-60 power armor, has either been modified by the Brotherhood of Steel's scientists, maybe attempting to make the jetpack systems more compact or flexible, or it's simply an experimental suit from pre-war times that they stumbled across. Or, you know, any number of other law-friendly things we can use to explain away. Or maybe the show itself will explain it. Or maybe they won't. We can just headcanon it away. It's not a big deal change in my mind. Now, personally, after the initial of, hey, hey, that's wrong, I started to actually quite like it in concept. Like I showed at the opening of this video, for those who don't know, power armor in the games completely negates all fall damage. From any height, there is no limit. In fact, I often use mine exclusively for this purpose, especially in the mountainous terrain of Fallout 76. My main character is heavily built around stealth, so I otherwise have no use for power armor, but I always have a set with me for this purpose. But that use case always felt weird. Sure, the power armor is a mechanical thing. It probably has dampers on the joints and whatnot and hydraulics to soften the blow when you hit the ground. But physics is still physics. And the mass of the thing and coming to such a sudden stop, falling from such a great height, in the real world, your bones and organs would still get at least a little souped by landing like that. So to me, this adjustment to the power armor mechanics in the show seems like a very sensible one. So while the jetpacks are not true free flight, they're more like a parasisted jump or even a hover if you use them carefully enough, these arm jets feel to me like they were designed for descent control to help you land comfortably and guide you where you want to be landing and landing in a way that doesn't shatter your patellas. I mean, if I were jumping off a 30-foot high pile of junk in a suit like that that weighs that much, I would certainly want something to slow my landing down a little bit. It's for personal comfort, if not safety. But you could also keep spinning forward on this concept as well. You know what would also be fun? If the jet nozzle could flip 180 degrees and you could use it for a jet-assisted punch. <laughs> Frankly, I think give me this in Fallout 5. I like it as an idea, as a concept. I don't like how it looks in the show. It kind of looks a little pissy and squirty and stuff, but you know, <laughs> the concept I like, and you know, it makes sense. But then again, I am no power armor expert. Like I said, I do tend to build for a sneaky, stealthy AF playstyle rather than Leroy Jenkinsing my way through a pile of enemies. So I'm far from an expert at West Tech Iron Man fighting. <laughs> 
But yeah, personally, I, I just kind of hope, and to answer the question I opened with, I hope they have the T-51 Ultra Sight armor in the show. It's a personal favorite of mine. It just has a few stylistic touches that I think make its silhouette look more interesting. And its default color scheme looks kind of menacing and cool as well. And the custom paint job I have for it in Fallout 76, I also really, really like. I wonder if my choice is going to be a popular choice. Again, let me know down below what your favorite variation of power armor is. But thanks for watching. I am Blunty. Uh, thank you as always to the patrons scrolling up above there. And I will catch you next time.